section 9.1, example 3. So we did substitution last time. Um, I actually prefer elimination. I think solving for a variable can get a little messy. Um, and elimination will be useful when we add even more variables. So elimination, we will adjust the coefficients. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply one or more of the equations by appropriate numbers so that the coefficient of one variable in one equation is the negative or opposite of the coefficient in the other. So if you see in the equation below, we've already done that step. 2x, 2y, and negative 2y um, are opposites of each other. So step one is done. In later examples, I'll show you how to do that step. And then step two says to add the equations. So I'm just going to do the top one plus the bottom one. So 3x plus x gives me 4x. Elimination is eliminating the y's. So 2x, 2y minus 2y, they cancel out, equals 14 plus 2, or 16. And that's elimination. And then we'll go ahead and solve this. We're still in step two. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and we get x equals 4. And then we'll back substitute, just like we did last time. So we'll substitute the value you found in step 2, so that's 4, into one of the expressions in step 1. So you can pick either of the two equations. They should both work. The second one looks a little bit easier to me. x minus 2y equals 2, so 4 minus 2y equals 2 minus 4, minus 4, negative 2y is negative 2, so y will be 1. So we got x equals 4, y equals 1, so our solution is 4, 1. And that's elimination. So let's try um, an example where they're not opposites yet. So in example 4, we want to find all solutions to x minus 4y equals negative 1 and 3x plus 2y equals 1. So notice I have no opposites yet, but we'll make opposites. So I could do 3x and negative 3x. I noticed that the y's, one's positive and one is negative already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2. Let me show you why. So the first equation is still x minus 4y equals negative 1. The second equation becomes 6x minus or plus 4y and now i have my opposites so i chose 2 to make positive 4 and make opposites and then we get equals 2. Um, you don't have to eliminate y's you could also eliminate x's if i wanted to eliminate x's i'm not going to do that for this one but i would have multiplied the first equation by negative 3 to make opposites so we would get negative 3x plus 12y equals 3. And then second equation stays the same. And again, you have opposites. So there's more than one solution to get. There's more than one path to get to the solution. But I'm going to stick with the first one I did. So we get x plus 6x is 7x. The y's eliminate, and we get equals 1. And so we divide by 7, we divide by 7, and x is equal to 1 seventh. And then we'll back substitute into either one. Again, to me, the first one looks a little easier, but you might feel differently. So x minus 4y equals negative 1. 1 seventh minus 4y equals negative 1. So minus 1 seventh minus 1 seventh negative 4y, and so negative 1 would be negative 7 over 7 minus 1 seventh. So let's see, negative 4y will be negative 8 over 7, and then I'm going to, instead of dividing by negative 4, I'm going to multiply by negative 1 fourth, um, just because I have fractions. It makes it a little bit easier. So those cancel out. And then negative 8 and negative 4 give me a 2 over 1, so y would be 2 sevenths. So our solution is 1 seventh and 2 sevenths. 
And we're probably panicking because there's fractions. So let's just check our answer really quickly. So x is 1 7th minus 4 times 2 sevenths. And we get negative 1. Perfect. And then second equation, 3 times 1 7th plus 2 times 2 sevenths. Hopefully we get 1. And we get 1. So we can check our work to feel more confident. All right, and then if we're a little visual, we can see what's happening. So what we're really doing is we're really graphing two lines because they're both linear, right? You could technically solve for y and get y equals mx plus b in all of these examples. And there's two of them. So we're solving for the point where they intersect. So if you wanted to graph instead or graph to check your work, that could be an option. Um, occasionally they don't intersect though. So for a system of linear equations and two variables, exactly one of these three things will happen. So, so far we've seen exactly one solution. We have two lines, they cross at a single point and we find the solution. Occasionally there's no solution. We call that inconsistent. And visually that would be parallel lines because they never intersect. And you can see that below. They have no solution because they never cross. And then occasionally there's infinitely many solutions. It's called dependent. It's because they end up making the same line. And so that means any point on the line is a solution. So let's check out some of these weird cases. Like how would we know those happen? So let's solve two more to see how we know. So example five, we want to find all the solutions to 8x minus 2y equals 5 and negative 12x plus 3y equals 7. I don't have opposites and there's no easy, um, it's not like 8 times 2 is 12 or 2 times 2 is 3. Um, so there's no easy opposites. So for me, what I'm going to do is I like the smaller numbers a little bit better. So I'm going to eliminate y by multiplying the first one by 3 to get me negative 6. And I'll multiply the second one by 2 to give me positive 6. So for the first equation, we get 3 times 8 is 24x minus 6y equals 15. Second equation gives me negative 24x plus 6y equals 14. So this one's weird, right? Because they're actually both eliminating, which is not what we expected. I was planning on eliminating the y's, but it looks like the x's happen to also eliminate. So if everything eliminates on the left, that means we get 0. And then what number do we get on the right side? 29. Uh, so is this ever true? Will 0 ever equal 29? Nope. So this is what happens when you have no solution. Um, start plugging in numbers. There's absolutely no way you can do 8x minus 2y equals 5, and then it also works for negative 12x plus 3y equals 7. It's basically saying um, 0 never equals 29. There's no way, there's absolutely no numbers for x and y you can plug in. If we graphed, you would get parallel lines. So no solution. Or you can call it inconsistent. So this will only happen if they both happen to eliminate. Let's see what happens in the other case. So let's find all solutions to 3x minus 6y equals 12, and then 4x minus 8y equals 16. So I'll eliminate the x's this time. So I have 3x and 4x. So I think I'll multiply the first one by 4 to get 12. And then the second one, I'm going to have to do negative 3 so that they're opposites. And I'll get negative 12. So we get 12x minus 24y equals 48 for the first equation. And then we get negative 12x, so those eliminate like we anticipated, 
plus 24y equals negative 48. So now we actually have the exact same equation because everything eliminates and we get 0 equals 0. So the idea here is any point on the line will make this true because this is always true. Doesn't mean absolutely any x or y, it's any x, y on the line. Will work. This is called dependent, they're the same line. And if we wanna get a little bit more accurate with our solution, um, we'll find the equation of the line. So x can be anything, and then y will be, um, we'll solve for y. So 3x minus 6y equals 12 minus 3x, negative 6y is negative 3x plus 12, and we'll divide by negative 6. So we get 1 half x minus 2. So x can be anything. If x is 0, then y will be 1 half times 0 minus 2. If x is 1, y will be 1 half times 1 minus 2. So it'll be any point that fits this pattern. X can be anything, but Y has to be on that same line. So this is how I would write any point on that line. X is my X value, and then Y will be 1 half X minus 2. And then if you were to graph, if you were to solve for Y in both of these, you would actually get the exact same line. So they're both the line Y equals 1 half X minus 2.